friends i cannot wait to um share with you some of my brush -o fun techniques i don't know why my camera does not want to focus okay now it is um yeah i can't wait i am gonna like chat for a bit and then if you're uh new or not sure how brush -os work this is a great time to to learn so uh anyways i'm gonna start i'll just start talking and explain kind of my process before and then um and then get to the demo but first off this is what inspired this whole demo and i'm pretty happy with it actually um i like i think uh, this is like what i would call like a first draft i mean i like it enough that i would probably give it away um but i don't know if i would like it enough to like there's a lot of things like i could change that i would like to change but i do like how it worked um and i just painted with brush oil as you can see the brush oil powders and some spots and i use sprinkle it to add some of the gold to the berries and i'm i'm quite pleased with it i think i could you know as a perfectionist i could do better so i kind of took the same idea but i just made it simple and i made it smaller into an a2 card and so that's what i got there and I think this works really well. I used the same colors, except for I didn't put any um, berries in it. But I could have put some small berries right here and right here. But what I'm really loving, is you can kind of see it in the camera, is that iridescent. Um, that I just sprinkled some gold on, on like the, uh, onto the, these pine needles. And then I just used my finger and kind of brushed it away and then I sprayed it real fast to set it and then as you can tell like I, I you can't move it so it's kind of a fun way to play with um, that um, and of course then I stamped it with a sentiment stamp and it works very well uh, this one I used I'll show you the stamp in just a second um, but I, I really just played with brushes and then painted it like water with watercolor and it worked out really well uh, and then this one is one that I'm definitely going to demo and it was actually made with just a stamp and a stencil uh, So not much different um, But I'll I'll explain how it how I how I made that card and it's really actually <laughs> one of those techniques where Like I can show you how to do it But it, then it takes practice because it turns out differently every time and you don't know if it's gonna work or if it's not gonna work so it's a very temperamental um, technique where it, 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 you either like the looseness of it or or you don't uh, so and but this worked out really well it it looks very Christmassy and floral and abstract like and I really like that uh, so anyways fun times <laughs> okay well I'm gonna get started first I wanted to share a lot of times with Christmas cards uh, I I buy a bunch of stamps and a bunch of everything. This is my Misty, and I actually use it to stamp watercolor stuff in. And I'll I'll do that in just a second. But um, stamps I like stamps that I can use my Misty on. But you they're a little they're they don't have to be expensive. Um, sometimes they are. I like Tailored Expression stamps, and I like Penny Black stamps. Uh, th those are the company names and then of course I have to <laughs> I just share blue night um, I actually designed the sentiment stamp set so I I designed all of these all of these stamps which is really fun and I've enjoyed um, working with blue night stamps I'd love to do it again if they are looking for sentiments but anyways um, they're most of them are what we call red rubber you, you take them off you can put them on what I call this is a misty you can take a take your watercolor card panel that that I pre-cut stamp it and then paint that's one way to do it um, the other and I can show you right now actually while we get started I'll just do that <laughs> I'm going to take this off. This is only if I use, if you use um, a clear stamp without the rubber backing. Um, but I'm not, we're not doing that. So um, I'm going to choose 
from the same stamp or from the stamp set actually this one I like both of them um, but the card that I chose to demo had the may the birth of Christ bring you hope and peace and I like that sentiment a lot actually I was thinking of my friends when I designed that sentiment um, I like it I like the size it works really well for for E2 cards and it's just one of my new favorite stamps um, and I think this came out oh my gosh two years ago so this would be like the third Christmas I think that we would have that I would have had it yeah because I I've used these stamps for a couple two season two Christmases now but they're still good I'm lining up my stamps it has a grid and um, hey Marion gl I'm glad to see ya <laughs> um, I'm just making sure that the sentiment is straight on and it does look like it so I'm ready to go uh, so I'm what I'm doing I cut to kind of I cut Strathmore watercolor paper this is a um, 140 pound cold press watercolor paper and they were 9 by 12 sheets and 9 by 12 and I think there was 10 or 15 sheets I can't remember I cut the whole thing up into four four by five and a quarter and that will fit on an A2 card base which is what I like to work with and now I can I'm going to use these magnets. These magnets come in handy. Uh, watercolor paper is kind of thick and there's some texture to it. So what I don't want to happen is have my paper move and then have a bad stamp image. So um, I'm using Ranger Archival Ink and this is potting soil. I think potting soil. Yo, just in case you were curious. If you wanted to write that down or something but it's just a nice brown um, I also have a black archival ink that I like as well and I'm just gonna stamp it there we go perfect I'm good now I can put this away now if you're thinking I am NOT going to buy a misty because these things this misty I think is oh I think you could probably get one for about 40 ish dollars so it's a little spendy if you're just wanting to stamp um, but never fear <laughs> garage sales and thrift stores are great places to find wood mounted stamps um, they're everywhere I, I like I got this one at a consignment store and I I use it I don't know how long ago I got it but it's a while ago but you can also um, buy stamps I've seen them um, at Goodwill I've seen them a lot of times at garage sales, um, sometimes antique store, like antique crafty sort of stores will have stamps. Sometimes they're not the cheapest, but I will say my favorite brands are Blue Knight and Tailored Expressions. And then once in a while, Penny Black will come out with a nice um, sentiment set that I will use. And then there's also this stamp came from Stampin' Up. And I know a couple friends that do Stampin' Up. Um, I'm not affiliated with any stamp company. Um, I, yeah, so I just like to play with color and I like to design stamps when I can. But anyways, uh, so I'm gonna kinda do this card in two stages. So if you're curious on how to do it completely, one you have to put color down brush it down let it dry and then go back in with this with the stencil and so that's what I'm going to do and for this I know that I want um, I'm just gonna start spraying and then I used a bit of sandstone because I I really like sandstone I think there's I think it's really pretty actually I love that orangey brownish tone And then I forgot my water. I had my spray bottle, but not my water. Okay, ready to go. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna kind of, I don't wanna, maybe I'll spray it first and then use my brush. I always like to 
do the less abrasive stuff first because I always want it to look like I didn't just paint it. Hopefully that makes sense. In my mind it makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah. And I also don't want it to be, um, I guess the right word is luminous. I want it to, a little bit of brush will go a long ways and so I, I want it to So you can kind of see how with the water, I just let the brush run away from the sentiment. So it's the, the lightest value right now on the card is right here, right? And then I'm going to wipe this up with a wash, with a towel. All right, and now now if I wanted to, I could start putting my um, my iridescent copper is what I used. And I don't necessarily want a ton, but a little bit goes a long way. And this will probably, I'm going to get a damp brush and I'm, because I don't want to move too much of the pigment, but I don't want the copper to look like I just sprinkled it on. So. I play with the texture a bit and because the ink is archival it's not going to bleed and that's what I like that's what I'm looking for and so there we go I'm going to let that dry now you could probably use a hair dryer I don't like using a hair dryer dryer unless I'm really pressed for time and since I'm playing around today and it's our Christmas party <laughs> first Christmas party of the year woohoo <laughs> Um, I say get this year over with, man. <laughs> Christmas cannot come fast enough, right? Uh, anyways. Um, there's that. I'm going to let that be. Okay, now I'm going to do another fun little card. So I stamped. I stamped this the same way I stamped that, but the stamp that I used is from Northwood Stamps. And they have had... I've, I've heard rumors that maybe they got brought up, bought out by another stamp company, but I think if you still Googled like Northwoods rubber stamps, you will still be able to find all of their stamps and probably places to go. I got this stamp set at my local scrapbook store and I used the Cardinal. And so there's the stamp. It, um, when I first, I bought this thinking, um, it would be a good watercolor stamp and then when I looked closer I thought oh no that's a whole lot of ink but it actually looks really cool once you stamp it so sometimes the relief side of the stamp can kind of throw you off but um, I said I'm gonna try it see what happens and I am actually really pleased with it and so the card that I did with that stamp was this one and then I needed a nice big sentiment to go next to the cardinal. And I didn't want them, to, I didn't want the sentiment or the cardinal to overpower each other. Uh, so I found the stamp set, this Merry and Joy, Festive Cheer, or Wish for Happiness and all in the new year. Well, anyways, I stamped that afterwards because I didn't quite know what I wanted to put there, which also works it's just more <laughs> work <laughs> but that's okay creativity is messy and it's part of it so with this I'm also gonna do my base layer let it dry and then go back in and do the cardinal so um, again I'm spraying this I stamped it with archival ink so it should be ready to go and I, it's really wet I don't know if I need it that wet so I'm gonna just dab it up a little bit with my towel the water I just want the paper wet I don't want that like so be wet like if I were to I don't want it to start dripping you can kind of see how much water I have yeah I don't want it to drip <laughs> I just want it to be a little bit damp hopefully that makes sense okay and I'm going to move that a little bit over there okay I used moss green moss green has some it's a really cool, I wish they would like put what pigments they use, but then I suppose that's like giving away their secrets. So, but I know that there's some purple or some violet and some yellow and I don't even know, but it's like 
one of the coolest um, pigments <laughs> that I'm really loving. Um, so with, I am being very careful on the corners because I want to keep the white fluffy stuff, that, that snow, I want to keep it white. So I am being a little bit careful. Now with this one, I didn't want it to look like I painted it. I wanted it to just look like I just played around or that it like just happened. And so that's how I do that. Um, and then I just let gravity kind of take its place. And then wherever I don't want it to go, I just don't put water there. And I like using 140 pound paper because it makes it easier to move my card panel around. If I was using 90 pound paper, there is no way I could be moving this around and manipulating the water. It would be flopping around. So the 140 pound paper might seem maybe a bit excessive for this, but I actually also find it really worth it. And I also don't like using uh, oh, they make like, I would call craft watercolor paper, uh, things that maybe at the craft store in the craft section, not in the fine art section. Um, Tim Holtz makes some, like, his watercolor paper. It's not really watercolor paper, it's textured cardstock that's thick, but it's not made out of cotton. It's, it's really not meant for watercolor. Um, now he would probably disagree and I hate to say that because I know that um, But it's not watercolor paper. It's watercolor cardstock <laughs> paper, which is not the same So get the watercolor paper. I don't really think there's much of a price difference either. I think it's just a brand preference and If you know Tim Holtz and you like his product, you'd be out to buy his product. So anyways It's all good, but I like 100 40 pound watercolor paper from the art department. Um, anyone else agree? <laughs> Maybe. Um, all right, I'm going to keep going. This is still pretty wet and I wanna be able to just get my first layer on. And my plan is to not spend a lot of time on the stamped image. But we'll see, I might. And I am always trying to go along with the lines of the brush. Let's see if it works. The more you um, color with a stamped image or like if you've drawn your own, it's nice once you get to the third or fourth because you know exactly where to color and where not to color. <laughs> and I know that there's this little guy, this little foot right there, because I, last time I completely um, painted over it. And I was like, oh no, where's his foot? I don't think anyone noticed, but I did. <laughs> okay. And again, I'm letting the line work do most of the work. And then I'm going to just go in and add my red. This is Brilliant Red. I think any red works. I don't know if you'd have to use Brilliant Red. That's just what I used the first time, so I thought I'd use that one. And I like how bright it is next to the moss green. I just think it gives it a nice bright color. Oh, and then I used orange for the beak. But I'm gonna let this Kind of just dry first and this is really just a wash nothing special but I'm gonna go back in and add some dimension when I when I'm done all right and then what I chose is I'm gonna use a tiny tiny bit of turquoise like not even enough to really change much but I want to be able to give a sense of it being snowy and then I can just go in and blend that turquoise around a bit because snow isn't completely 
white. And there's a lot of colors in snow. And I'm actually going to use that to cover that up. And then there's some more of that blue, just to give it a little bit of dimension. I like that. I'm going to let that dry. Yeah. I suppose I could add a little bit more red right there. There. I'll let that dry and then see how I like it once it's dried. All right, this is still a little wet and I need it to be really dry. So I'm gonna wait on that just one more time. I'm gonna show one more technique. And that's the, I'm gonna show you how I like to paint my pine. <laughs> So a lot of times, put that right here so you guys can see. It's very quiet in the chat unless I'm not seeing a whole lot. Nope, I'm not. Hopefully, if you can hear me and you're enjoying this, I would love to know. Or my thought is Christmas will be here. What is one of your favorite traditions that you like to do either with your kids or your family? Uh, my kids are still in like grade school and I can't find the brush that I want. I like using this brush for, um, it's a liner, it's a number two liner. I have like two or three of them laying around, but I couldn't find, I couldn't find the one that I usually use, so I'll have to use this one, which is fine. <laughs> Anyways, I'd love to know what your traditions are for Christmas if you have any or maybe this is the year where you're like trying to figure out something new. All right, so what I like to do is I like to, Jean Haynes calls this um, sketching, water sketching, I think it's the term she came up with, but basically you're sketching with just the water and I'm, and I'm doing this just to kind of see where my where I want my where I want my like little pine bows boughs go going and I think I like that right there um, so I just get like this bead of water where I think I want my 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 semi yeah you can see where the bead of water is right okay now I'm just going to put on some olive green and I'm just going to sprinkle it kind of where, where the water's at. And now I'm going to put a little bit of olive green right there and a little bit of turquoise right here. And now we're just going to work out, and I think I got turquoise on there, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about it. All right. Um, and then I just start. So this is going to be like the thicker part, like the bottom part of the pine bough. And so I'm going to very much, and this takes time, I would say, and I think what I meant to do was go out this way. So I'm going to not mess with it too much, pretend like I did what I was supposed to do. I think those colors will turn out okay. And I can always tell when I'm running out of water because my brush just gets drier. And if I don't like this at the end, um, I can always put like, you know, something else to hide it. <laughs> so I'm not quite worried about it yet. It might not be my favorite. Um, of course, when I'm doing a demo, I get flustered sometimes and think I know what I'm doing. And um, it's different when you're actually just creating for fun and teaching so anyways but I'm I'm just taking it's almost like I'm painting hair but I'm painting pine needles so I start here and then I just go lighter um, a lighter touch 
and I am going the wrong way, but that's okay. I'll show you better on the next one. <laughs> and, and most likely what I could do if I really don't like this and it's really bugging me, um, I'm just going to say, okay, let's start again. It is going to be all right. It's pretty light anyways, so I can always just... But once you start at the one end, you got to go all the way down. But that's okay. This is it's practice. That's what I say. Like, if it works out, great. If it doesn't, well, I learned something new. And actually, you might like this way. Um, because now you got a nice background to start with. And now we can start again with the background already pretty much painted. I painted this background after I got this painted. And I think um, it worked. But it also wasn't as effective, efficient. It was not as efficient as I think it could have been. So maybe I'll let that dry. We'll go back to this insole technique. I'll come back to this. Oh, I don't know if you're a watercolorist, but in my studio, I always have like three or four <laughs> um, projects going on at the same time. And I think as a loose watercolorist, it helps us stay looser and I don't know, I don't fret the fact that I made this mistake because I wasn't paying attention to my line work. <laughs> so anyways, all right, so this is pretty. I could probably send the card the way it is and I think whoever received it would, would enjoy looking at it. I think there's more that I could do to it, which I'm going to. So I'm using this stencil. This is a um, tailored expression stencil. I'll give you the name. I'll give you the number. It's um, tailored expression stencil number 44. And I think it's called pine and um, poinsettia, poinsettia and pine, maybe. Um, but if you, if you do like poinsettia stencils, tailored expressions, you would find it. Um, but so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with the placement of my stencil. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to just lay it right here I, because I, if you look at this card, I had this little points out of right here and then it just kind of went off over here and over here. And that's, that's my plan. My plan is to do that. So, um, I think, I think I'll just start right here and they make stuff to like keep the stencils down like this I find it to I find it too restricting for me <laughs> I'm kind of special I don't know I cannot explain my process other than the fact that um, I, I don't like taping it down for this technique you could um, I, I don't find it necessary Anyways, all right, so I'm taking it. We just put sandstone on. Now I'm going to do this brilliant red again. Use whatever red you have. It doesn't have to be brilliant red. Um, I think I am lucky enough to have all the different reds, and I, I always go back to the brilliant red, I think, because it's just so bright and luminous. Okay. So I, I just wetted down this brush o and I'm using it like watercolor. Um, if you do not like the idea of using your paintbrush, that's quite all right. You could spray it. It'll just be a bit more messier. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, I'm using not very much water. In fact, I'm trying to make this more of a dry brush than anything. It is going to bleed. That's okay. That's part of the technique. I always caution, I always stay on the air of caution. So use a dryer brush if you can. You'll be grateful later because if you use too much water, it's just going to bleed everywhere and kind of make a mess. And that is not my goal. I think I'll stop there, but I'll do this little holly berry and maybe a little bit of this. And then I'm going to pick it up. Maybe not yet. <laughs> I want it to go up around this corner a bit more so it looks, there we go. And I think I missed, I forgot to get the middle 
So I'm going to be very gentle and put those middle circles in. I can always add it later. So that's one way. I'm going to show you more of the, and then if you like that really loose look, which I use a lot more pigment on, um, I can show you that too. But let me, let's, I'm going to, if you wanted it to just be kind of looser, I just add more water and then just let the let the pigment kind of flow whatever way I want. But I'm kind of liking that, so I'm going to let it be. I'm going to add this one right here. Maybe. I'm thinking maybe I'll just do... There's a method to my madness. <laughs> I'm looking for a way for the what I'm looking for is I want a holly leaf to go down I think I'm going to have to be alright with that one we'll do that okay now this time I'm going to add a little bit more water and a little bit more red so you can kind of see the difference so this one was a bit more tighter meaning you could see the design a lot more this one's going to be a little bit more looser and more fluid and it just the the difference is, is I'm just using a little bit more water and I'm just kind of going with it my best advice is to say once you start committing to this just keep going don't don't lift it up and see how it goes just you just got to do it <laughs> And if you ruin a a small card panel, the nice thing is is you can read you can um, flip it over and start again, and that is quite all right. Now, if I didn't want that poinsettia right there, which I do, I think it's going to be cute. I could have I could have waited, moved it around a little bit, but I'm pretty much okay with that. I'm going to need to get some more brush though. And I'm just holding my stencil and not moving it with my hand. So I would say you would have to be kind of in the right mindset. Um, peaceful, excited, maybe not excited, but peaceful and just ready to see what happens you gotta be in your zone <laughs> okay and so you can kind of see how that ble bled because I used a lot more water now what I could do is I could just so once I am done with the stencil I always like to clean it off fast because I don't want brush -o anywhere close to any of my projects and I got like all these cards laying around so I'm gonna clean this real quick I really sometimes when people are using stencils they'll take like a Pyrex 9x9 um, Pyrex baking pan and just fill it with like soapy water and just put it in the soapy water um, you could do that if you were using a lot of stencils and I have done that before especially when I use gel medium or gesso but not today. <laughs> I'll just clean it up real quick. Okay, so it's still kind of wet, so if I wanted to, I could add a little bit more. I can move the brush around a little bit. When I say move, I don't mean actually move it because it's a staining. The brush will stain, but I could add a little bit here and a little bit here, and I think I even took some so it's a lot of playing is and then just watch what happens and like I said like the stencil um, the stencil technique turns out different every time and every time you think oh well that didn't work like it did last time I don't think unless you're a really awesome painter I don't know how you can it's 
not always easy. Um, but I will say I am loving how these are a little bit different, but yet very vibrant, very Christmassy. You can still tell that that's a poinsettia. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it'll dry a little bit lighter too. So, so there's that technique. I hope that helps you guys um, play with your stencils and your brush, your brushos. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been canning tomatoes like all month, and bruschetta is a is a yummy tomato like salsa that I've been canning. And so when I say brushos or bruschetta but I'm really it's because my brain cannot figure out that I'm canning instead of painting or vice versa anyways <laughs> there's a creative problem <laughs> all right so so um this is pretty dry I'm what I think I want to do I I like to mix it up a bit and I'm going to mix it up just a tiny bit I'm going to use some colored pencils and I'm just going to use some Prisma colors nothing nothing crazy um i'm going to use a darker red uh, this one is um real crimson and then i'm going to use an orange for the beak maybe i might go for a yellow ochre ochre or a spanish orange and let's see what we can do i just want to be able to add a little bit more dimension to this and I know I'm not going to get it with the brush oh because um, it's the same color it'll just and I don't necessarily want to color the whole bird but I'm going to do a little bit just to give it a little bit more there now I could spend a lot more time on my on my cardinal but I'm fairly happy with this. I am going to just, and I'm using a light touch. I'm not, it's definitely a light touch. Now, if I wanted to, I could go in with Gamasol and blend that, but I don't think I need to. And I'm actually going to leave this alone. I'm going to leave this alone. I'll come back to it later when I need a stamp, when I need a card stamp the sentiment and then have it and I don't know how many um, like season greeting um, sentiments versus like been thinking of you or whatever like this could be an open-ended card for lots of things now what I thought would be fun is if you had some white iridescent diamond dust glitter you could put some white glitter in the snow just to let it glisten a little bit and I think that would look really pretty or you could put some red um, glitter glue stuff right here I've seen people do that before and that always looks pretty um, yeah but for now I am completely content with how this turned out and now I'm ready to sap something if I wanted to um, so let's go back to this card and then I think oh we got to see it's dried a lot lighter <laughs> it doesn't look so um, so unorganized and uh, clearly I need this as my guide so I'll be <laughs> taking care of that and then I'm going to put my turquoise over here so I got my moss green and my turquoise and I'm going to use my number two liner start and what I want to do I like so I I'm always looking to see okay did I get enough texture in the brush oh and I think I'm gonna say I did and I'm gonna start this way so I know that I have two pine boughs on each end so I'm not thinking it's one pine needle it's two it's always those little things that will make or break your piece. Okay. And now I am just 
in my mind, I am growing my pine needles. That's the best way I can I, I can describe it. As I'm growing these pine needles. And I want lighter and darker. And if it helps, I've been studying pine trees for a very long time. So I feel like if I am not used to pine boughs, then yeah, I would probably look at them. But I know that they're darker in the in the bottom and in the middle and then they get lighter and then I don't know about your pine trees but our pine trees I mean there's a bunch of different ones and we have a lot of pine trees that I mean really can look blue more than green um, when you actually stop and study them so I always like to add blue to my pine needles I think I'm quite done there. And now I'm just gonna adding a little extra. Again, I want it to look full and really fun. And I'm I'm being very fast about it, but very particular on where I'm putting my lines. I love this liner um, brush because it really can hold a lot of water and pigment. Does anyone have a Christmas music rule in their house like I do? <laughs> My husband first so I've worked retail a lot um, in my college years I worked at um, always a retail store and we would start listening to Christmas music in October like October 1st boom Christmas or yeah October 1st like light Christmas music is playing but by Chris by October 31st or after Halloween Christmas music is like blaring, like it is all Christmas all the time. And so I have gotten used to listening to Christmas music in September. And so like September, I don't know why, but my husband's birthday is September 14th. After September 14th, it is like Christmas music is in my house and there's nothing he can say or do because it's just part of like who I am <laughs> so well, you might you know and I think Christmas music is just beautiful to listen to even anyways anyone else have that like need to listen to Christmas music like before Christmas music is a thing I'd love to know <laughs> maybe it's just me anyways um, I'm gonna have to add some blue because this is looking a little too green for me. I'm alright with that. And I might actually just lightly, very lightly add some of that blue in. Like I barely touched and you can kind of see it working but I'll just I just touched it and my hope is, is that it will just kind of blend in with the green a bit. I'm going to get my brush wet a bit more. And if it becomes too blue, you can always fix it. Yeah, I like that. That's so pretty. All right, last one. And I'm actually. sprinkled a little bit on just to give it some pigment to start with because um, I still like the look of the brusho like I could very much easily do this with watercolor too but since we're using brusho we should use brusho's um, properties to make it and now this corner I really need to fill it out oh that's looking really pretty 
And I'm glad I had that happy accident because that blue right there really works and it works right there too. So I guess I'll take that happy little accident. I'm going to call that done. I think that looks really pretty. I don't know if I would change much else. I think I could go back in with some of this blue right here and just feather it out, not add too much. And my plan is not to make it, but there, I like, that just adds a little bit. This is still looking kind of blah to me. I'm going to sprinkle just a tiny bit and then let the water kind of take care of the rest. There. I like that. I'm going to let that be. Maybe that's the start of a pine cone. We'll call it like a pine cone bud. <laughs> I like it. And then what I would do is um, I said gold and I did use gold right here. I'm going to use um, copper this time. I don't know. I mean, the gold is really pretty. I'm going to try copper because I already know what gold looks like. I don't know what copper looks like. And then, like I said, I'm just going to take my finger. That My finger is just a little too rough, so I'm going to use my brush. Like that copper just kind of took over that pine bow, but that's okay. It's a, I, I find this very um, therapeutic actually. I don't know if anyone else would. And then as soon as I'm done with the sprinklet, I will spray it. Because it's already starting to move around more than I wanted it to. There, now I can, I could try and um, take care of that blob, but I'm afraid that if I do, I'm going to make it worse. <laughs> so maybe what I'll try and do is just use my little brush and remove some of it, but I don't think that's going to help. Maybe. I'm all about learning with as I go. Um, yeah, I like that. Um, all right, spraying it. And then this is another one that I can make if I just need a chance to just paint something. I can always save that later and then stamp something or paint now and then wait for stamps to go on sale. I know Michael's, oh my gosh, Michael's always has a bunch of Christmas. Um, they're very economical stamps, so they're not like stamps that you would keep for like 20 years but they're stamps that like I think they're 60% off like on Black Friday Michaels and I think Hobby I know Hobby Lobby always has Christmas sentiment stamps um, my best advice is to I have like four Christmas stamps sentiment sets that I use on a regular basis and that gives me about 20 different sentiments chances are they're probably not going to get the same sentiment stamp on their card every year um, so I feel pretty confident in the fact that you know buy two buy one sentiment pack for the next four years and then you'll have quite a selection of sentiments to to put on your your card base but anyways I really I really think that these are beautiful now with this one I knew what I was going to do and so I stamped this first and then did the pine after. Um, I didn't. I don't know what I'm going to do this time, so I'm just going to let it be. I think I'll probably just put a nice little sentiment right here, maybe. I don't know yet, but I'm really excited with for it. I'm, I'm loving it. So, anyways, I think that's like a wrap for my demos that I was going to do. Let me show you again. This is now dried, and I really like how that is. You can see the iridescent. You can see that. Um, yeah, I like it. I think it's really pretty. Um, I did use a lot more water here. Um, and I think I added more sandstone to this after, after that. So I, if I wanted to, I could add and, but I'm, I'm afraid that if I do that, it's just going to 
kind of look muddy at this point. I do like this. I think it's really unique. Um, of course, I see some watermarks right there. So, of course, now I'm like, oh, I should fix that. But now I'm thinking, why well, probably shouldn't have fixed that? <laughs> Anyone else do that? No, me, just me. <laughs> um, anyways, I think it's really pretty. Um, I have a lot of other techniques I can do with stencils that I haven't shown you guys. Um, I'm all about using what you have and utilizing what the in uh, just utilizing you know tools to make new things uh, so there we go so those are our demos there we go yeah it was a fun time I'm glad to have um, shared my <laughs> my creative mishaps and creative um, triumphs with you guys um, Thanks for watching. Thank you, Marion, for the nice comment. Um, I hope you try this. It's really a fun, a fun one. Now, if you don't have a poinsettia stencil, I think a star or any kind of stencil would look pretty. Really, I when it comes to this kind of artwork, if you wanted this to be a fall card, do more browns and golds or browns and blues. If you wanted this to be a fall card, you could have easily have done like a like a, a fall theme color with this so it's very open-ended and then what really makes it a Christmas card is the sentiment not so much the colors because this probably could have been just fine as a fall card if I used a different sentiment so um, it you know it's fun <laughs> it, uh, yeah any questions or anything that you would like to see next with stamping or um stenciling <laughs> oh yeah by like i said like if you can wait um i'll see if i can't get a company to do like a giveaway or something for some sentiments um i can't guarantee anything but i'll look for a giveaway i'll see i'll contact a couple of um stamp companies and see if they're willing to do a giveaway for um for brusho for the brusho fund group <laughs> um i've done that before and it worked out but no guarantees but i'll see what i can do um but get sent i mean start looking at garage sales consignment stores you can find a lot of sentiments and stamps at um yeah, at the Goodwill and at consignment stores. I'm always amazed when I go to our local consignment store. I always see stamps. I don't buy them as much as I used to, but you totally can. <laughs> and the watercolor paper is awesome. And if you have, I don't know, 40 bucks to splurge, the Misty is going to be your best bet. And if you really want to go down a rabbit hole, you can look at Stamp Junkies on Facebook. It's a Facebook group. Um, or just YouTube like watercolor stamping and you'll find a whole bunch of things that you'll wish you had. <laughs> it's a it's a fun hobby to get into. But you are very welcome Marion and I hope to see you um, post some Christmas card pictures whenever you get a chance. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you later, guys. Um, yes, Marianne, I will do that after the chat, or after I'm done. Yep, I'll make a list. <laughs> All right, have a good one, you guys. We'll talk to you later.